anything that you want me to look at in particular, I'll go over and it'll be in the in the recording. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Excuse me, sir. I have a question. Uh, can you explain me like in some places we are using RGB colors, somewhere we come like somewhere we are using like directly black and solid we are stating for the colors yeah. yeah. For here we are using RGB and for the next one and the next one like whichever one you like. Data, we are using black. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, whichever one you want. Uh, so can you explain? Me for, All right. So there's multiple for ways. RGB is how we will do it. It's up to you. I mean, you choose. So what I'm saying is there's multiple ways. Now the problem with the black, white, blue, pink uh, way, of, you know, and you can do that. We could have just said blue here, right? Um, the problem with that is you've got a limited number of number uh, of colors. Uh, if you want to have access to like a palette like this, then you can use a hash or you could use a RGB. And, that, and from that, without even knowing the numbers, right? See, I don't know what these numbers are. I just look at that and say, oh, that color's pretty. You know what I mean? And I'll choose it to that color. And you see the number change and we see the color change. So um, we can use these hashes. The hash, do you notice that it's a six digit hexadecimal number? And the six digits refer to the RGB. It's just another way of doing it. You could do RGB and then open a bracket and then put the numbers. Um, which is going to be uh, a number which is going to be what uh, two to the eight, a number between zero and 255 um, for, for three, three of those numbers. Uh, or you could do it this way. Um, they all affect the same way. They're all using R, G, and B, um, but it's just, it's just different ways of handling it. Uh, so I'm not going to say one is right or one is wrong. You, I'm, I'm expecting you to sort of get comfortable with it and use the one that you like. I hope that answers your question. So, Excuse me, sir, I have one more doubt. Uh, for example, if uh, we have a, an HTML, HTML page and a CSS file differently, like we have two files and we apply like one style in uh, like, for example, for heading, in this page, if I apply heading a different style and and create in CSS file again, I change the style of heading. So which uh, like which change will be done first? Like which change will be there? The change which I made in HTML or the change which I made in CSS file for the All same right, thing. So for example, for heading, they call it cascading style sheets, right? And the reason for that is because you can replace a style with another style. Uh, so basically, I would say the one with the nearest proximity to, the, to the, um, uh, the thing that's being styled is the one that overrides. Or another way of looking at it also, if you have two commands that uh, happen one after the other, then that's like a programming language executing one command and then executing another command. And the command that's executed last is the one that's going to remain. And so the color might change and it might happen so quickly that you didn't notice. All right, so uh, the, basically the, the thing that's most proximal or closest is if you put styles inside a tag, all right? So your inline styling, that's going to override your other styling. Uh, otherwise, your, um, your internal CSS styling, and then lastly, your external CSS styling. So uh, if you styled it in the external and you styled it in the internal, I think the internal will will override the external, and lastly, the in the inline will override the other two because it's closest and last to what you've done. Does that make sense? So, so like, uh, yes. Uh, so the like inline element will be like will be there. Yeah. If I wanted to do inline, can you see I've got the table tag now, and if I started typing style, and yes. on, I can do some things here, right? That would be inline styling. That would override anything that I put in the CSS. Okay, the CSS is just like I didn't do it because this would override it because it's nearer to what we're doing and it's done last. Does that make sense? Yes. I hope, I hope that helps. Uh, any other uh, questions? That was a nice question. Any other questions like that? <laughs> or, or not like that? 
Um, have I marked attendance? Let's mark attendance. Let's see who's here. Let's see who cares. Uh, got 19, 19 participants. All right, so let's look at the attendance. Uh, we've got Aisha, Muhammad, Ashad. Ashad, Ashad or maybe. Um, who's here? Always here. Iman, Hamad, Hamdulillah, Hamdulillah, Hamid, Hamidullah. Right. Yes, sir. I'm did, I right? did I say it right? I'm trying. Yes, Hamidullah. It's Hamidullah. Hamidullah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, nice to meet you, Hamidullah. Uh, you, Iman, Ivan, Khadija. Present, sir. Um, Norman, you'd like to be called Norman? Uh, yes. Muhammad Ashad, Namra, Nizar, Nizar, Noor, yes. and Noor, and Shahid, and Shaima, Takia. Welcome all. Um, any other questions? I mean, I hope that this isn't too difficult. Um, it can be, right? I mean, okay, so what I'm trying to think is, what is it that you got to get your head around? You really need to get your head around what we did last week, right? Uh, which is, where are the files? How do we uh, get to the files? Dot and dot, dot, you know, for um, a current folder and parent folder. The idea of parents and children folders and uh, navigating from a child to a parent and from a parent to a child. You really need to get down. You might say, no, we don't, Mark. Uh, we, we, I've been doing this in this exercise and haven't used that. Yeah, in this exercise with two files, but you're going to be making websites and websites might have hundreds of files and they could be kind of really bad if you didn't organize them properly, you know, and you could really make yourself a lot of work. You could get to a point where, where a website was unsustainable because uh, it was so messy, you know what I mean? With, uh, with folders sort of all thrown into, uh, sorry, with a single folder and all your files thrown into one place. Um, just hard to work with or, or thrown into random places, you know, even worse, right? Um, so by organizing, by taking the time at the start of your website, organize your folders, make sure and follow a, it in a systematic way. And there's just some things that we do systematically, like we name our files with lowercase, okay? We uh, have a, a home file, which we call index.html. Uh, we have an images folder, always name it the same. Um, I call it images. There's a standard for you. I mean, instead of uh, pictures or pic or whatever. Uh, do it in a standard way so you don't have to remember, how did I do it last time? Instead, oh, I follow the standard. This is standard. I'm always going to call that images. I'm always going to call this folder uh, CSS folder. I'm always going to have a file called style.css. You might have multiple of those, but if you make some standards for yourself that way, you're gonna find your web development is gonna be a lot easier. And if you're a software student, you're gonna be doing a lot of web development. I mean, you know, this is what it is. You'll, uh, the programming language, even we've changed the programming language in the course now. Um, we used to teach Java, now they're teaching JavaScript instead. JavaScript is going to be code that's going to be embedded into your HTML code. So these, so this might seem like a lightweight course and we're just getting started, you know, why are we doing this? Why don't I just uh, use some kind of um, uh, um, website uh, package development thing like, um, uh, uh, why am I writing it in an editor? And it's because you need to know what this stuff looks like so that you can write your JavaScript code so that you can make a website that that works and does all these wonderful things like the websites that you, that you interact with on a daily basis that have big databases behind them and are, are storing all kinds of information about all the users that come to them and using that information to um, make uh, the, the, the service a better service for their users. Okay, so that's kind of like, I, I hope I didn't sound like I was preaching too much, but uh, I'm just trying to, uh, underline the importance of what you're doing here. It, it might seem kind of trivial, but it's really the foundation of what you're going to go on to in your courses. And, and in fact, that's why I've, um, I've uh, been using the Visual Studio Code 
so that when you go to your course with um, Mr. Doug or Mr. Um, Mr. Robert, uh, where you're going to do your more advanced software, you, you've seen this, you've seen the editor at least, you're using the same editor that they're using. Um, it'll be a little more seamless for you. Uh, for those of you who are doing hardware, um, we might uh, not use this so much in the future, but you still uh, will be, if, even if you're doing hardware, you'll still be working with servers. What will be on those servers? Well, people will be putting their web applications on those servers. Um, so you, it would be good if you knew how, how they looked and, and uh, that type of thing. And so that is why we have this course and that's why I, it's so important. And so I really do encourage you to sort of really get into it. Um, but we don't need to arrange our folders for this assignment. That is cool. Uh, there's only two web pages. This assignment, I'm going to let you off on the arranging of the folders. However, if you do decide to, to arrange them, that would be kind of cool if you can make that work. But uh, just to bear in mind that we will be revisiting what we did last week. You absolutely have to be able to arrange things. Not for this assignment. That's a good point. Um, so are there any other sort of uh, comments or things that uh, anybody wants to make? I'm, I'm going to, uh, to pause the